fellow <laughs> South African. I, yes, we met earlier, yeah. Um, okay, will you do an ID first? Hi, I'm Margaret Gardner. I actually have just come in from London. We arrived last night, and I found a whole bunch of South African candy that I grew up on. Uh, uh, and then I thought I could give so it to sweet. her I'm and not, not to, you. to you. So, oh my <laughs> God! <laughs> Crunchies, Turkish much. delight, flakes. Oh, wow. Okay, so, we need to do this fast. <laughs> okay. We need to do this really fast. Fabulous. We gotta go. Thank you. Shove um, those in my mouth. Do do <laughs> uh, do your kids eat like uh, the the candy that you grew up with? Or yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're highly addicted to Smarties. Um, there's a little store, I don't know if you know it, that sell a lot of South African candies and our chutneys and mm -hmm. tomato sauces and biltong and all of that stuff. So we go once a month and the kids go and it's like a whole South African candy section and all hell breaks loose. So keeping the culture yeah. alive, I yeah. love to hear that. Yeah. What about you? Because you also have three different cultures to choose from. I do now. Um, yeah, I got my Nigerian, British, and the, you know, my kids are growing up American. Um, which one do you like more? Which one? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for asking that question. <laughs> oh my goodness. No, Tell that's, us the that's, truth. A, that's a that's a dangerous What's question. What's all the divad hate here? I, I know. Um, well, you know, it, when it comes to gringo, I love the fact that I had a Nigerian experience, you know, because that's what I was able to bring to this film. And it's it's rooted in reality. You know, I watched my parents really having to navigate some difficult things when we were younger, living in the UK. And even though this is a comedy, you know, some of what he's going through, whether it's the financial difficulty or being marginalized at work or being taken advantage, dis uh, yeah, advantage of, you know, that's something I definitely saw my dad in particular having to, to navigate. And so it was nice to be able to bring that to this. One of the things I loved about this movie was in life we always hear that nice guys finish last. Mm -hmm. And this kind of plays with that in a very interesting way, which mm -hmm. I identified with. Mm -hmm. um, so um, have you ever felt under pressure to do the right thing when everybody else is being rewarded for doing the wrong thing? Oh yeah, you know, abs absolutely. You know, I uh, this is a very very big admission, um, but you know, one of the things that I got so <laughs> pummeled for, I had made a decision when I was younger, I was going to remain a virgin till I was married. It's very impressive. And and th but but there were people around me who like took it upon themselves to just that is not gonna happen. And I had, at drama school, I had like girls waiting bets to see who could bet me, and it was like oppressive. I was like, just leave me alone. I've just, <laughs> I've just made this choice that I wanted to, you know. And um, so, yeah, they really went for me, but I managed to hold on. And, um, wow, that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, but it's not is probably. It? <laughs> See, she would have been right there on the side. <laughs> well, Charlize, my next question was going to be, how much of a rule breaker are you? Because he's got this great scene in the minibar where he has to talk himself into actually taking something from mm. the minibar. So yeah. how much of a rule breaker are you? I am a little bit, I mean, you you know how we're raised in South Africa. I, I definitely, like, I really love that moment because I still have a little bit of that moment in me where I'm just like, I, right. I just always feel like I would leave money or I just, I, I just am not one of those people that's like, oh, give a shit. Like, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna, I always feel a little bit like, that's just not cool. Like, mm -hmm. that is not cool. Right. And I had a moment very, very similar to that where I did my first, press junket and I was flown and we were in London and we stayed in this really nice hotel and it was like my first experience like that and I remember seeing a minibar for like the first time in my life right. and I knew that it wasn't free I, right. I just like instantly I was like right. this is not free there's right. no way this is free right. and I called downstairs and I was like how much is I was, I was like, how much is the I can't remember what it was and the lady was like no it's it's okay it's on the movie like they were paying right, for it right, and right. I was just like are you sure and even still I couldn't take advantage of the mini bar even after they right. told me the production was picking it up I was like okay I'm just gonna have one <laughs> um, in the halls of power women and minorities are not well represented and even more so in Hollywood and yet both of you have broken the boxes that people try to place on us. Um, talk about that journey of um, having your voice heard and breaking, uh, walking a different path than the one that has been assigned to you. Well, I think self-knowledge is, is a huge thing. You know, being aware of who you are 
uh, having a confidence um, in that person and then not being shy about you know, wanting to see that scene, not just for yourself, but for others. You know, I know for a fact growing up, it was seeing Sidney Poitier, it was seeing Denzel Washington, that made me feel like my horizons could be broader. But, you know, when it comes to being a Nigerian or even being black and British, there are very few representations of that on a, on a global level, you know, I would come here to the States and be like, well, there are black people in London, you know, they, they, you, you know, or, or a film I did uh, set in Africa, United Kingdom, where I played a prince, an African prince. What, what? There were African princes? There were, you know, and so that's just to do with the power of this medium. And so, you know, I think for both Charlize and I, not only as actors, but as producers, you recognize that you can advocate for seeing those images you didn't get to see coming up and hopefully the, the, those coming behind us will have a different set of parameters for themselves. Well said. For you, for women? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, David just touched upon it. I was lucky enough to see film at an early age with women like Susan Sarandon and Jessica Lange and M Meryl Streep and Frances McDormand. And, you know, not that I even could put together that, you know, they were American. I didn't even know they were American. I didn't even, I was like, they are people like your neighbors and that's mm. just their job. I didn't understand the whole celebrity part even behind it, but they were strong women and they told strong stories and I was definitely inspired by that. And I was also just, I was raised by a, a mother, a strong, a broad of a woman who just kind of instilled in me at a very young age that there's nothing that you can't do mm. because you're, and she lived by that example too. I mean, she wasn't in the industry, but she ran a road construction company in the days when no women, the, I mean, she was the only woman in these conference meetings. She would wrap me up in a blanket and take me to a site meeting at 3 a.m. if a machine broke down. And I knew she was the only woman doing that. So having that example to me was just like, well, of course I can do this. Like, mm. and what, what an idiot you are to think that I can't. Mm. And not in an, an arrogant way, but just in a self aware like I, I, I knew what I was interested in and what I could bring to the table. Mm -hmm. And I think valuing yourself and knowing the value that you have and that you bring into a room is maybe the, the thing that carries you through the moments of you know, being kicked in the teeth, which this industry does a lot to women, to anybody, to all actors. But I think to women in general, like we definitely have a much harder time kind of getting up in that ladder in, in, in all positions. You know, we start off at the 50-50 level in the lower position jobs, and when we get to the 1% of the, the power positions being held in corporations and in businesses, we represent less than 1%. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, we have to change that. Well, you've both been great icons. Thank you so much Thank for your you. time. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You.